Hello. Oh god, my head comes really fucking high up. Hi, is everything sounding alright to people? I hope so. Good. I guess. Fuck it. This is going to be even more botched than the last one, but... Oh well. So yes, um, welcome to the second stream, which is taking a lot longer than I anticipated it to start, but never mind. And with me I've got... Hello. This is Mr. Tardis Reviews. How are you all doing? Hey, we've got the ultimate SJW with us. Oh yes, absolutely. Yeah, you f you, you really hit the the jackpot I know. here you with me. You fucking cuck. Right. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so yeah, this this one has taken a while to organise because firstly it was going to be organised like not last Friday but the Friday before. Yeah. And that was when I was going through an incredibly busy time. That was my fault. Couldn't do it. So we arranged for next Friday. And then Dimmy's like, oh no, I can't do that Friday. So then it was her fault. I had a, so, look, I had a date, alright? That was, that is fine. That's a, that's... I just want people to know that it wasn't just me. It was both, were equally look, cool. Let's, let's be real here. If they watch my content, they know full well how shit I am at keeping a schedule. And then we were going to go live about an hour ago. And I had to pick up my fiance from work in the city centre on the same day there's a bloody Man City parade happening. Which is why this is a little bit later than planned. So that means, Dimmy, you have to screw up one more time, and then we're perfectly balanced. I mean, it's me. Give it a few minutes. I'll, I'm sure I'll do it. Great, okay. Uh, <laughs> well, I think I've got the, the volume sorted out, because naturally this being a... Oh, and I've got to hit start recording, because I've actually made myself a little note here. So this time oh. it's actually... Oh, and uh, Billy's on here. Billy go at John. Hey. Oh, hi, Billy. Who's actually going to be the next guest when I get around to organising the next one? Right. Uh, spoilers. Starting. Well, if I've announced that ages ago, it's now just um, Billy, Richard, and Chris Johnson. Oh, cool. Because I've got Chris Johnson in the game, he's actually fucking in. Hmm. Does he only? Will he only be part of the stream for his scene? Yeah, he's just that one little character, and then he's gone. But like, as in, he, he he's not, he might not even be in the stream. You, you you just speak to his character in the game, and then it's technically featuring Chris Johnson. Well, look, you know how scheduling is. Just saying. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Right, episode two, Blood of the Cybermen, and let's hope it's not as ear piercingly fucking loud. Oh yeah, I forgot they had this weird design for the Cybermen for just this one game where they had the logo on the chest. Mm, yeah, it's the only version that they've that they've got it, I believe. Because they had the Cybus look, and then it just had a plain circle for the longest time. Mm. Um, in case uh, viewers are thinking, if I'm reacting quite slowly to the events of the game, uh, I am kind of <laughs> I am relying on Timmy's actual tri Twitch stream for the video feed. Um, so the audio is live, but the video is like maybe five seconds behind. So, I am slow, but I may come across as especially slow. <laughs> That's just the excuse. He's had a massive joint a minute ago, so he's not processing things properly. Just, it's just it's just been a really rough week. <laughs> oh my God. And instantly, this guy's already got better acting than Matt Smith does in these games. Yeah, it's so strange, because I actually went back to rewatch my Blood of the Cybermen review for yeah. like eight nine years ago it's a horrible video don't watch it um, <laughs> but um yeah and matt smith's voice acting in the clips that i used in the video was so bad he just sounds like, so bored karen, well karen gillen sounds pr pretty good in these games but matt smith i think matt smith is like the juggernaut where if you restrain him he can't do shit <laughs> but if he's moving around on set in space I, I, with a good amount of space moving yeah. flapping arms he's unstoppable what i've seen from the Wii game they did where they motion captured him he seemed a lot more energetic because obviously he was sat in a booth during this yeah yeah he's literally just like restrained like the job yeah um, oh god yeah it's, it's still just as bad in this one great oh yeah he can never get his fingers around G-Shot no. um <laughs> creepers in the chat All right, Ace creeper. and yes I think these are the, the cyber they're just going to shut delete every two seconds because this was 2010 before they got over that Mm. I say that there's only been like one good news series, Sideman story. So, which one's that? <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, I can't really remember the. F I watched a bit of the okay. f um, series ten finale, which was all right, but the you only one. What? 
I've, I need to revisit Rise of the Cybermen of the Age of Steel because since I rewatched it, I've got Graham Harper's book. He directed the story. Yeah. And the way he talks about the behind the scenes stuff on it, it makes me want to like rewatch that story with that in mind. It's a really great book, by the way. It's called Calling the Shots. Right. I bought last year, I got Graham Harper to sign it, and it is now precious to me. Um, so yeah, and I, I really want to revisit that story now. I've but, not, um, yeah. I've not seen it in years. I've not seen most tenant stuff in years for obvious reasons. Earth, Sh- Earth Shock and Tomb of the Cybermen are the best. Yeah, definitely. Mind you, I quite, I quite like Attack. Attack is a guilty pleasure, and I don't like saying guilty pleasure because you shouldn't be guilty about liking what you like. Uh, but I, you, you probably take my meaning. I know it's yeah. not that good, but I enjoy it. Oh, good. It's not like the first game where it's going to give you the history of the snowmobile. <laughs> Literally, every, every object in the first area you examine, and it would just say, oh, this is um, the history of Trafalgar Square. This is the history of the London taxi. <laughs> oh, yeah, because this is technically like free part of the BBC license fee, BBC Worldwide thing, so it has to also be education. Oh, I didn't know that. That explains a lot. Well, yeah, because these were just free on the BBC website, like... Immediately after each some episode, episodes yeah. Of broadcast. I, I know that um, City of the Daleks was after Victory, I think, maybe a week or two difference. I can't remember what, exactly when this one was uh, was released. So it's, it's, it's a pity we didn't do our research, isn't it? Oh, let just <laughs> wing it. Also, I didn't know they did physical disc versions of this game, did they? They they did, but I've never seen one in person. Yeah. I'll see if I can reach this computer. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I oh, wish well, I wish Amy would stay here for the entire game because I know I remember this one having a lot of those sneaking sections, and every time I did it on the the side a Dalek one, she got me fucking killed. Yeah. What a dick. Um, I'm just looking at your your Twitch layout and it, like uh, the Resident Evil yeah. inspired health bar, it, and I just like how it's fine, and it, it's fine. I I should fine. I wish I had like a commander so when I get stressed out it just gets. Uh, worse and worse. <laughs> and then it's like red and frenetic and it says triggered. <laughs> that was a but sod like, to make this, but it's, it's worth I, it. I just wanted something a little bit more interesting. No, nah, it looks good, yeah. And um, yeah, but I guess like the use of the word fine, because it's just, it's not even like good health, it's just it's fine. fine. <laughs> Hoist the wider side, that's right, so I guess I've got to use this. I'm surprised I haven't seen more of the um, character models from this game in certain things on the internet. Yeah, I'm... I know. I know someone's already ripped the Jody model from the v- the, f- the uh, VR game, so I'm assuming mean, that's going to end up somewhere. Oh yeah, that, yeah. Uh, but these but these models here, they're not too bad considering it's like a multi-purpose adventure. Well, I, don't, I don't like the smile Matt Smith's giving me there, though. It's kind of. Oh. Uh, uh. And he, well, to, he's got he's got the breath, but it kind of just makes him look like a dragon. Yeah, a very very dead dragon. Yeah, and like, I think I think they did. Eyes. I think they did scan his face for this, didn't they? Because I know they did for the um, action figure. They did of him. Well, it, you, if you're gonna literally tie him down to record the lines, you might as well get, get his, his face. face. I mean, it, to be yeah. fair, it's quite an easy face to get. You just got to get a, a normal face, grab the chin, and just stretch it. <laughs> yeah. Just normal face to chin face in like two seconds. Was was the uh, Wii model really bad? I I, I never had a Wii. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, it was bad. It oh, was. Um, wasn't was, that the game with River Song? Eternity Clock Up on it or something like that? No, there was like Escape Battle of Earth. Oh yes, because I remember because um billion. It was a DS version which was pretty good actually. It was Billy- like a Professor Layton game. Yeah, billion Matt Toflo did it for a review of Death, I think. Did that or was it? I can't remember if it was billion Matt or Matt and Cat. Okay, it's called Return to Earth. That's it. <laughs> you, you can buy it used for one pound eighty-eight, um, and the character models are the are the worst. I need to give him something warm to drink. Well, I uh, I'm gonna post um, an image in the Twitch chat of um, the wonderful Amy Pond uh, in <laughs> in the game. Oh. So yes, yeah, so keep an eye on that. Uh, yeah, Trilby stream in the chats. That's me, and that's just an image of the spectacular. Job they did at rendering Amy if, Pond. If my mod is in there, please mod Trilby. It's always useful to have extra backup. Oh, is this could be the history uh, of the icicle? No, it's just a. I think <laughs> I think they've learned from the last icicle. one. They think they learned from the last one to not have like twenty thousand. There we go. What they really should do is that with every like item in the game, they should try and bring it back to um, John Carpenter's The Thing. Um, <laughs> oh yeah, I forgot. This is really it's The Thing basically. It's so yeah. similar. Yeah. 
It's the thing, but with Cybermen, which is actually a really good premise. Yeah, I mean, it's not like the Doctor's ever ripped off the thing before. I mean, see the Doom up until you get to the mansion is. Yeah, but not, but not in adventure game form, Dimmy. Not oh. in adventure game form. I don't know. I'd happily play an adventure game version of Seeds of Doom. Just be Tom Baker punching everyone. I would happily play an adventure game version of the Peter Cushing movies. That'd be fun. Yeah, that's essentially City of the Daleks. A bit. Oh God, I wanted. I wish I. I wish I knew how to mod now because I'd do a modded version of that where you have um the movie Daleks. Mm. Oh, that'd be cool. And instead of uh, Karen Gillan, you play as Roberta Tovey. <laughs> but like, because it because they have to move the it's just to be textured. It's just really oddly stretched out with the textures. <laughs> yeah, it is just um, like a, a child character model, but stretched out to <laughs> I, Karen I'm just getting the image. That, you know, they get those like creepy Garfield images on Twitter. I'm just imagining that, but with Peter Cushion being haunted by a twisted thing-like version of Roberta Tovey. I'm here, grandfather. So I've never heard of Creepy Garfield, and I immediately regret Googling it. Yeah, it's brilliant. Uh, no, you've literally just missed us looking at a snowmobile. Oh, okay. So oh, yeah, there, I fucking saw <laughs> I knew that was going to come up. The Skidoo. I didn't know that. Skidoo. The skidoo. It's a snowmobile, isn't it? Oh, yeah, before the snowmobile, the Skidoo was the main method. Oh, right. So it's not even a history of the snowmobile. It's a history of the Skidoo, which is the, the dog pull thing. Well, I have learned something. I didn't know that had a name. Hmm. This isn't a game, it's a goddamn book. Oh, I've got Sarah Jane's collectible. I've got any percent as the um, thing on stream, but who knows, this might be an accidental 100% run. You never know. Well, well, Cause this is you, obviously... can't, you can't 100% the adventure games, because they never finish them all. So even if you Was there meant to be more? If you collect every single collectible between City and the gunpowder plot, you still have empty spaces in the menu. Oh, shit. Do you know if there were any other ones planned, or...? There were. I couldn't tell you what they were. I will have a quick look. Because there's definitely empty spaces in the menus. Uh, what oh, boy, that's going to really bug my OCD. Oh, oh no, do, do not want to go that way, Matt. Okay. I'm <laughs> sure... Okay. I can see a card right there! <laughs> but yeah, it's been bugging my o OCD since uh, 2000. <laughs> 2000 you never quite got over it, did you? Oh no, I still wake, wake up in a cold sweat. Alright, so I've got to push this for him because he can't be bothered jumping over a tiny gap. <sighs> Bloody old doctor. I know you just fell off a cliff, mate, but... He's not even... Is he limping? Oh yes, he's... I'm guessing that's a limping animation. It was a... Okay, oh. so here we go. Um, on se Okay, so... On September 20th, 2010, a second series was commissioned for 2011 of the Adventure Games. BBC's head of multi-platform vision, Simon Nelson, says, and I quote, Given the success of the first series, we'd be daft not to recommission. And then... <laughs> they didn't recommission. And yeah. There was no second series. Yeah, I caught a quote. you got to remember, this is Doctor Who, so these are definitely styrofoam icicles. <laughs> Me and um, Billy and Dan from Five Who Fans were watching Legopolis yesterday for a video. Yeah. Uh, and uh, yeah, when they're when um, Tom Baker and Anthony Ailey is running through a crumbling Legopolis, and it's just clearly polystyrene. I know. Everywhere. Is that for the uh, Blu-ray review, which I was meant to cameo in, but we never got round um, to? Uh, it, it, it's for the um, the unboxing video. Right. Um, I actually just bought some props for it today. <laughs> the next video is going to have props in it. Oh, brilliant! I I miss making like big edited content, but it's just such a drain half the time. It, well, it, yeah, it, it's more I'll... just like organising stuff with other people yeah. as well. Because, you know, other people are a burden. Uh, I know. Um, but it's yeah, it's kind of my own fault because it was a case of I want to do unboxing Jesus. videos of these things, but everyone's doing unboxing videos. What can I do to be unique? Yeah. The... And then it was just a case of why don't I make some of them horror films? The ice is too thick. Oh, I just clicked it again. If only I could melt it slightly. I'm guessing. Oh. I'm guessing Sonic Screwdriver because it's Matt Smith. It's New Who Doctor, so he's gonna be fucking yeah. I get. I just. I, I got really hopeful in um when we fell to earth that they were gonna sort of tone down the Sonic because it kept malfunctioning. But no, it's just getting used just as much as ever. Yeah, well, especially in um, Saranga Conundrum, where it just starts working again halfway through the episode, and you're thinking, "Oh, that's a shame." Yeah. I I, 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 I like I like I like the design of the new Sonic. I like how it's all sort of cobbled together, but I just wish he wouldn't use it for everything. Like that yeah. bit in um, 
ghost monument where there's just a door, like a catch with one of those spinny wheeled things, and she just sonics it. Just turn it with your hands! Yeah. Yeah, I think there's something to be said with they just trying to make it look dynamic, but sometimes you you just have to go for the efficiency. Yeah, it's the thing I'm not too fond of, how she always does this. Look, this huge... Yeah, the big pose. Yeah. But it's the fact that it's, she does it almost every time. Yeah, I don't mind every so often, but it's the fact she's... The thing that always makes me laugh is, though, the Sonic was um, killed off by JT because he thought it got overused. And it's nowhere near as overused in the 80s than it was in any New Who. And like, there's um, a great interview in the first series of Confidential with Rusty Davis when he's talking about bringing the screwdriver back. And he's like, you want great big chasms and monsters and aliens to get in the Doctor's way, but you don't want a door to get in his way. Yeah. So that's why we brought back the Sonic. I mean, I liked it in um, Pim and Mars where the Doctor just had a lockpick. Mm. Or like, there's a bit which always makes me laugh when I watch it again, when I watch um, Brain and Morbius, where it was like, oh, Sonic screwdriver. Oh, I've left it in the TARDIS. When would that ever happen? <laughs> I think they... Serious. For series twelve, the Doctor just needs a great big thick block of ice in a pocket. To <laughs> I'm just um actually I remember that because I think it was in the Doctor's wife. The Doctor even said, "Oh, my sonic screwdriver's in the TARDIS." Amy looked confused, and he's turned that he had it anyway. Oh, it's one of the oh god, these fucking puzzles again. Uh, Clockwork Harley Harley Quinn says in the chat, "The Doctor reading things off the Sonic when there's no when there's clearly no screen." Oh yeah. Me for you. I like I find it funny though. It's kind of like in the Avengers movie when no one has earpieces but they're acting like they do. They they did it in Torchwood quite a lot, didn't they? I know I, I know J- up on it. I know Jack had the big luminous blue one in series one, but that quickly went to just the invisible. Oh, God, touch me here! I'm I'm actually talking to someone. The thing that annoys me about these puzzles is they're really obvious, but I keep fucking them up somehow. Um, so part of me just wants to reach through the screen and just... Oh, wait. This is where the wire goes. Oh, I got it. Nope, nope. Go on. And where's the green one? What am I missing? Oh, blue one. Shit. Where's the blue one go? Uh, oh, yeah. That's good. Oh, these mouse controls are atrocious. Mm-hmm. This would be when the the fine heart rate monitor changes to struggle. <laughs> Caution, danger, poison. <laughs> but, uh, mild puzzle. This was a game made for children. <laughs> <laughs> ah, Ooh, yeah, uh, Mario fanboy fifteen says hello, guys. Is uh, if that's hey. who I think it is, that's one of my patrons. Hey. So, all right, Mario fanboy. Ah, uh, see so yeah, what? While, while Dimmy is struggling with a children's puzzle, <laughs> I'm going to be keeping that in the chat. Brilliant, that's useful because I'm crap at multitasking. <laughs> well, since I'm not playing the game, we're not even in the same county. I, 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 so. I like the fact that a lot of these sort of games, though, they're always the same sort of puzzle. Like hacking in most games is just pipe mania, and my camera's not oh, focusing. Yeah. And those um, matching image puzzles from City of the Dalek. Oh, fuck. I, I remember them giving you trouble as well. Yeah. Mainly because I kept getting distracted by talking to people looking at the chat. Oh, God, I forgot Gunpowder Plot had Rory in it. Um, oh, yeah, yes, it does. Rory the Santaran Killer. Yeah. Um, yeah, you, you can't get these games anymore, but they were on Steam for a long while, and someone brought me them for a joke. Mm. Oh, yeah, I forgot this was the first time the Cybermats came back. Yes, before um, closing time. And I actually think I prefer that design. It looks a bit more like the weird serpent one from Revenge. Yeah, I think they're pretty... Yeah, these ones are pretty cool. But um, I, I do have a soft spot for the small... I do. I've got one with toys of... somewhere. Yeah, um, I, I think worked F on... Got them. Um, I worked on a series a few years ago with uh, Steve Hughes, who directed Closing Time. Right. Uh, Bl- blind with the stories he told me about Series 6. Um, but, uh, yeah, he, ke- he said he kept one of the props, and it's, like, got pride of place. Oh, like, that's cool. Office. Like, one of the actual props. And it's, it's, I, I, I like those small designs, and they look cute until the teeth show up. Yeah. And I, I like that balance. With this... Yeah, the cyber, no, the, I think that was the last time the Cybermites appeared, wasn't it? They had the little cyber mites in that awful, awful... Um, I can't remember what it's called now. The uh, Neil, Ga- uh, Neil Gaiman oh, uh, one. Nightmare in the Silver. Thank you. God, I hate that story. <laughs> That's, yeah. I think the thing for me was that was the one I was most looking forward to. Oh, yeah, yeah. And the fact it was they had the seven spinning their heads. And now for the history of the steam vent. <laughs> <laughs> 
But the fact, yeah, the fact that it was just to turn wheel to release. Well, turn it then. You can I, do I have to Sonic it? No. <laughs> I bet you do have to Sonic it. Ah. Oh. Okay. And uh, Clockwork Harley Quinn, I can just say that and then not tell the stories. Uh, then they're, they're not necessarily my stories to tell. But when I retire and, and write memoirs, I can give it a go. Oh, Trilby, you're such a cock tease. Oh, the history of geology. Oh, the goody. Of cock teasing. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Where the fuck am I going? Oh, look, rocks. <laughs> Oh, I need to watch Destiny again. That's all on YouTube, you isn't it? Because someone's done a widescreen conversion of it. You don't need to watch Destiny again. I um, like Destiny. I, 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 I used to like watch most of the classic series in widescreen because whenever when I used to start doing reviews on Windows Movie Maker, it oh. used to automatically turn 4x3 into widescreen. So that's why some of my first reviews of the classic series ones are just widescreen, even though they're not meant to be. Um, so that's how I watched a lot of uh, cl classic Who when I was God. first. Matt, Matt does not sound scared at all. Dispatch the Cyber Slave. I've given. To be fair, that just looks like a Cyberman on a bender. That looks like a Cyberman from a really bad fan film. It does a bit, doesn't it? Yeah, because looks... everyone would use those sight those um, voice changer helmets. Yes. Oh, speaking of which, does anyone, either yourself, Dimmy, or anyone in the chat, know where I can get, even if it's really shoddy and bad, a Revenge of the Cybermen replica helmet? Oh, Revenge. Yes, for reasons. Whatever you get up to in your sex life will be no that's, judgment. That's, that's between me and God. <laughs> As for, uh, but yeah, if anyone knows, even I, I don't want to, I don't want to spend a lot of money. But if anyone knows where I can get a. Revenge of the Cyberman helmet. I think you. Can, I think um, this Planet Earth doing, but I'm assuming you want one which is affordable. Yeah, even if it's like really shoddy or only has like. What? What if I can? Get, I wonder if I can get the Doctor killed just by blocking him in. Oh yeah, give it a go. Oh no, like no, but I just completely phase through him. It's not like there are stakes. <laughs> <laughs> it's not like you've got only like three lives or something. It's a steam belt. The steam's up. Oh, I guess I've got to turn this when the Cyberman gets close. Or maybe it's just a case of just <laughs> the doctor ah, yes. runs around in circles for like a year. <laughs> okay, Edward, that's actually quite a good pun. I'll I'll give you that one. <laughs> <laughs> oh, if only I was clever enough to program it, because like you watch like speedrunners and that who have like their Twitch layout reflects their like status in the game and that. Mm. When I eventually play Resident Evil, I might look into how to do that. Yeah, or whenever you um, finally get around to being the world's first Doctor Who adventure game speedrunner. I'm sh there must be. I'm sure there must be. I'll have to look on speedrun.com. I think you might overestimate the depths of, of the fandom. I, from, I think the problem is with all of these sort of games, there's not really like s story games. Yeah, it's like doing like a, a speedrun of Life is Strange. It doesn't really work. But the, but they are also um, some of them are quite easy to glitch and. And like get through walls and through objects and such. So there, there might actually be a community waiting to happen for it. Like basically how I broke um, the gunpowder plot and just like started killing all the Santarans as Rory. Like yeah, yeah. Th these these games are quite easy to glitch from memory. <laughs> oh yeah, I can't wait to see this at ADGQ. Ooh, <laughs> I, I I hope that happens. Oh, here we go. But yeah, this is literally like mo what most fan films Simon would be. It would be the voice changer helmet, and then someone just pull like a boiler suit. Yeah, yeah. Which, to be fair, is a good budget conscious hook for a fan film, but not something you'd want from a professional production. No. And then again, the most of the fan films I did that weren't the best. Mm. Oh. Hello. Come on, fella. Shoot. Can I can I Sonic it? Oh yes, nice. you can. I uh, yes, I actually remember this being like me getting stuck on this bit because y the games have programmed you to not get in that field of vision, yet you have to get in that field of vision to Sonic it and progress oh. the story. Um, that is just bad design. Edward just reminded me. I remember this one episode of um, Casualty years ago, where basically just it was the standard casualty thing. Someone falls down the stairs. What to do? She had a kids with her, and one of the kids had one of these Simon helmets on. Yeah, and the bit I remember is her falling down the stairs, and then you see oh, a shot over the banister, and just this Cyberman go, "Mummy!" Oh, and it's the I funniest thing. 
I really want someone to edit that when in Doomsday when the police officer says, Be careful, stay in your homes, and then it cuts to... <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, like, a cyber-converted kid would be bleak as fuck. It, it would, and they should do it. Yeah, but they won't. Cowards. But Bring back the new adventures, that would have fucking dead kids everywhere. Uh, Edward T. Sweet says Michael Myers with a Cyberman head. Yeah, that's what reminded me of it. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> I remember also the, the numerous times that Sylvester McCoy would just pop up and casual, uh, casually. So, um, I do not have a, 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 um, a wide bit of knowledge for casualty, so I didn't know he was I, ever in that. I used to watch it all the time. Same with I used to watch EastEnders all the time. One second, I think I've got a friend who was in casualty. I know John Hutch was, if you remember John Hutch. I thought I said John Hurt. No. I was like, what, renowned actor John Hurt? Look, he was in the 50th anniversary of Doctor Who. His career wasn't exactly a highlight at some point. Oh, no, so it wasn't Casualty, it was Doctor. So was... And, yeah, Sylvester McCoy did do a um, episode of Doctors where he basically played the lollipop man, which is meant to be the Doctor. <laughs> That's great. He even did the uh, card trick from um, Remembrance. Oh, cool. You don't get many visitors up here. Um... That was a shit hit. <laughs> Um, Mario, Fa Mario Fanboy 15 those reviews on YouTube don't watch them they're terrible <laughs> that's me with all of my uh... oh yeah McGann was um... no yeah Holby City he was one of the main characters mm. I know Adrian Edmonton was also one of the doctors in Holby at one point mm. um, talk of lollipop men in the chat there's, um, a, gr there's a great episode of um, the 4 o'clock club which is a um, CBBC series, where the PE teacher that everyone is supposed to hate, uh, played by Little Cook, um, from Big Cook Little Cook, he gets a part-time job as a lollipop man, and he gets so angry that he campaigns for the rights of lollipop men, and becomes a men's, act men's rights activist for lollipop men. Okay. <laughs> really clever and really funny. If you want to see just a really funny bit of, like, <laughs> humour... Uh, I recommend watching that episode if you can. It's, it's on the iPlayer, I think. Right, you remind me here because this is annoying me. I remember when you came over because you had a job in right? Norwich, wasn't it? Uh, yeah, it was and a you, channel four. Yeah, yeah, and you had to crash around mine for the night. I remember, was it Delta and the Bannerman or Happiness Patrol? Happiness we watched. Patrol. We watched. Happiness. We watched Happiness Patrol drunk. We watched something else, but I can't remember what it was. I've never watched Delta and the Bannerman. I actually think I think it was maybe just Happiness Patrol. I'm pretty sure we watched two things. I don't think we watched two Doctor Who things. We watched a Doctor Who thing and we watched something else, but I can't remember what it was. I can't remember what it was either. But yeah, there's something on the TV that was on at that time. I think I got a DVD, but I can't remember what it was. Nah, I'm afraid I, I'm afraid I can't remember. I, I just remember it being Happiness Patrol. Yeah. But, uh, my mind was clogged with peaks at that night, so I can't remember everything. <laughs> Sonic? Nope. See, that's the thing with this game. You've got a Sonic everything. I honestly dealt with my least favourite um, McCoy story. Even I, worse I, than um, Rani. I don't mind time in the Rani. I um, it's flaws in it, but I I kind of I enjoy it just for McCoy. The only one um, I actually really like uh, Paradise Towers. Oh yeah, Paradise Towers. I think that that's good. At least from memory, I I own, I've not watched. I wa it. I rewatched it recently because I want to see what it was like. Because I remember looking on the special features, it said about alternate soundtrack. The alternate mm. soundtrack's not that good. Okay. It's not as good without the Kef. See, I um uh remember a few of the McCoy stories when they were shown on UK TV Gold. Yeah. Like at like six a.m. or something. Oh like no, that. back then it would have been just UK Gold. Yeah, I, oh yeah, UK Gold. I remember I've... like just recording some of them, but then it would alternate like day from day to like a random John Pertwee episode and then a, a, a McCoy episode. Yeah. It was hard to keep track on uh, any sort of order. Oh god. Yeah. Um. I quite like Ghostlight. It's a bit confusing. Oh, Ghost Ghostlight's terrific. What am I fucking doing here? I should really should. Getting, getting the history of the radio. <laughs> I should have really paid. I've just been doing for fact. I've just been doing these puzzles playing Spider Man. Oh, that, now, that, now that's a game. That's a game. Because uh, I played it because um, the girl who I'm seeing, I crashed around hers and she had it. So I've been playing that and The Sims. It's so good. Yeah, that is fun I, as hell. I, I, pl I platinumed it on PS4. It was a Christmas present from my fiance, whom I adore very much because she bought me Spider-Man. My problem is... Ah, there we go. My problem is I haven't got a current console. I've not had a console since the 360. Because so hmm. I just basically PC game constantly. 
um, by PC game, you mean Doctor Who the Adventure game. Oh yeah, well look, I needed my, my expensive computer just to run this game at the higher settings. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> you gotta get that, that 720p. <laughs> survival is fucking amazing. I love survival. survival. Yeah. Oh yes. There's... McCoy is probably the most inconsistent era. The, his first where... season's weak, even though I like, instantly enjoy it. But the rest is gold. I even yeah, I even really like, like uh, Silver Nemesis. Yeah, Silver Nemesis is similar to like Attack of the Cybermen for me, where it is kind of I don't think it's quote unquote objectively good, but I, I, there's a lot of stuff I enjoy. I like I like the action elements. I would I I think... definitely say thingy um attacks better than. Silver Nemesis. Well, I think even though there was clearly no budget during the McCoy era, there's a hell of a lot of great explosions. Oh yeah, I think that's what they spent most. I remember watching the um, documentary on the Remembrance DVD where they got the new series. Yeah. Guy in, and he's just like, "Oh, we couldn't do that nowadays. Oh, we couldn't do that nowadays." <laughs> well, I'm, I've, um, I was just looking up. Um, I wanted a quick list so I could quickly look at um, all of the McCoy stories. He was only in twelve serials. If you don't count the TV movie. Yeah. Why me? That sucks, doesn't it? Jodie Whittaker's... Like, it, obviously, McCoy's had more time on screen. Yeah. But in terms of stories, Jodie Whittaker's like one story behind McCoy if you don't count the TV movie. Yeah. It's, That's nuts. It's, it's sad. I, but then again, he did get a lot of spin-off stuff as well, like all the books and that. What am I meant to oh, do yeah. here? Examine. Locked in his contract. What side mats? I can, I can hear one, but I can't see it. Oh um, yes, uh, Cy Bergen brings up in the chat um, that so that survival's got great outtakes. Oh god, <laughs> that one where McCoy just flips his shit and lobs the uh, umbrella away. Like, will you stand still, you idiots? But I tell you not to move. Yeah, move. <laughs> and there's also the two comedians in the shop, and there's great outtakes. Oh them. yeah, Halen Pace. But because in the mid to late eighties, the BBC were much better at keeping their tapes in storage, and they didn't throw everything away or burn them like in the 60s with Yuri from the Deep or something. Yeah. Um, they actually have the great McCoy outtakes. There's some really great ones in Remembrance of the Daleks. Yeah. Um, I love so the when, one when um, they jump over the fence. Uh, Sophie gets like two steps and just goes... Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And there's one where uh, um, Sophie Aldrich doesn't know that the Dalek is not meant to be smashed. So she starts... Oh, God. It. That poor... Because apparently the bloke was still in there and he's like, Fuck! And there's um, there's a great bit when uh, McCoy's like, yeah, the line is is meant to be no heroics. I've got enough problems already, and he says I've got enough trouble problems learning the lines. Already. <laughs> oh, you know, really, there's not really been many outtakes for Doctor Who because remember, like that was quite a big thing when the DVD releases came out for like series two onwards. There'd be like the outtake wheels. There's been none. There's none for Capaldi, and there's not been any for Jodie so far. Yeah, that's a shame. And you know, the footage is out there. I think the thing is that it's like sort of. DVD releases aren't really a thing as much anymore because obviously you've got things like Netflix, you've got BBC iPlay, you've got all the other streaming services which have these. Yeah. I'm the sort of person who gets really pissed off trying to watch something I've got on DVD, so I just pirate it just because I can't be bothered changing the disc. Yeah, yeah. It's. It, I think for there's still a market for it for TV shows if done properly. If you skimp on, if you do a real bare bones DVD or Blu-ray release, there's just no point. Yeah. So but, so it's it's kind of like you either go all in, or you just do the bare minimum. And for the BBC, like this past couple of years, have just opted for the bare minimum. Which yeah. Is a real thing. Especially since Confidential is, myself included, just the reason people are into media. Yeah. I think that BBC stuff is really valuable to a lot of people. I am... Um, one of my f set I f saw in um, HMV, which I really like recently, was that um, HMV started doing... Uh, is it going to zap him? No, I've got to turn it on. Uh, HMV have now started doing... Do I have to turn it on? What am I doing? Yeah, HMV has started doing... Ah, light switch, yeah. Okay. You have to get behind the Cybermen and give him a wedgie. <laughs> he probably has got pants on. It's wet willy time. Right, even the Cybermen sound bald in this. <laughs> um... Uh, Frazzle is the bomb in the chat says uh, that they're glad that there's, that there's no outtakes for series 11 because each of their dynamics are so forced. Uh, from what I can actually tell, obviously I, I'm not there on set, that actual dynamic between the main cast is very real from what I from what I, I mean, heard. you just have to look at that one um, normal bullets cannot hard Simon but they've got more to that like, they're surging humans Okay, yeah, it's mainly just cyber stuff. Yeah, I'm like that clip of them in the back of the taxi singing along to um, whatever that song was. 
Oh yeah, yeah, I remember now. Um, I can't remember what I can't remember what the song was, but I know what clip you're on yeah. about. But um, I've, I was recently just on a job. But I tweeted this the other day that there was someone who worked on series eleven and series twelve, and just saying how great the like Tozin, uh, Bradley, um, Mandip, and Jody are together, and that that that's a very real and fun, great dynamic that they've got. And even like I think there was that great photo shoot where it's like the pinky red backdrop. And there's clearly some like photos which they weren't posed for, where Jodie's just smiling and her hair's all messy and stuff like that. And I like I think that just those clearly unscripted photos or unplanned fun yeah. photos just show a real Ooh. chemistry between the group. Uh, series twelve is still in production. They filmed abroad. Someone in the chat just asked. Uh, they, they filmed abroad for the first like month or the first block of filming, and they are now back in Cardiff filming. Haven't they like really cracked down on the? Um filming locations because I know DWSR has been upset recently the, the only thing I've heard is if Ace Creeper's still in the chat he'll, he might be able to elaborate but I, I watched an Ace Creeper video where they were caught in tuxedos on the street Yeah, and that's really all I've seen um, so I I think just the fact that I don't know more might just be anecdotal evidence as to why I, I think it might be a combination of that and the fact that most of DWSR has us blocked <laughs> yeah, that, that is a good point. But I tend to not learn this info through DWS. No, that's anyway. true. You've, you've I, got all yeah. your contacts and that. Well, it, it, not even that. It, some of this stuff just pops up on my Twitter feed just from random people and and stuff like that. Not necessarily from DWSR. And I've actually uh, not um, heard much from uh, people. I've actually not really reached out or asked. I've not been that fussed in just learning that info. Yeah. Um, but the, the, the person who told me those stories about like Jody on set... Um, she was saying how she's gutted that she worked on the show because she loves she loves the show. She's a fan, but she has like made, she knows major spoilers from series twelve now. Yeah. So she she can't watch it and be surprised. Did did anyone see what I was meant to do here? I got um I know it's not oh, I know they I, I know I've it's barely been watching. Yeah, I know the um it's meant to be broadcast in twenty twenty. Uh, yes. I don't know. If, I don't know any news about a further delay. I was, I was assuming January twenty twenty. So, yeah, but I I don't know. And there's probably um, like there's rumours of maybe some sort of special come Christmas time. I I'd be surprised if they didn't have have something. Planned. I think I've seen people complaining that there's talk of a Christmas special because they were complaining at fucking the New Year special. Oh, they, he's run out of ideas for Christmas. Oh, he's coming back for Christmas now. He's out of ideas again. Fucking make your mind up. Yeah, well, is it Children in Need or Comic Relief in 2019? I'd be surprised if they didn't have some sort of sketch. They, they do Children in Need every year and they do Comic Relief every other year. Okay, so yeah, so whatever they've got on, like, come no. October, November this year, I'd, I'd be surprised if they didn't have some maybe five or ten minute skit or yeah. something, and then they can attach a trailer to it. I think that's why they're also doing these VR games as well, because they've got the other one coming with the Simon and the Daleks. Yeah, if because... I think if they don't have something this Christmas, which I think is fine if they don't, but if they don't have anything like that, they're going to need something to start building up hype for Series 12. Yeah. Because that's one reason Series 4 did so well, because Voyage of the Damned was broadcast like three or four months before. It was a massive smash hit success on Christmas Day, and it had a trailer for Series 4 after it. That's why I think Series 4 did so well. Yeah. I, I do think there's a bit of a shame we've had a gap this quickly into the new run, but I'm sure yeah. I, I think you said there were reasons. Uh yeah, from what I can tell, um like obviously like nothing is official or confirmed. They just were not remotely expecting that level of success from series eleven. Um and from what I can tell there's some behind the scenes stuff where Chibnall's not quite got the freedom he wants. Uh so now that the series has done so well they're like okay tell you what we'll give you a bit more freedom which means that we may need to get some additional locations get some additional cast members that means additional pre-production time let's give them that time uh, and then we can go into series 12 a bit more prepared so that's from what i've heard is the reason for the delay i um yeah i, I just saw Re resolution mentioned i really liked resolution but yeah resolution was really good uh... Uh, and i think that um them withholding the Daleks from the marketing was maybe good in the short term, but like the moment it was announced, it was like public that the Daleks are in the story. Yeah, uh, the I, the iPlayer figures were really strong for it, so I think maybe they should have they shouldn't have kept the marketing so secretive. Oh god, I talked to two zombies outside. Right, I know what I'm doing now. It's fine. 
I um I do wish that I just wish they'd called it Resolution of the Daleks because that is such a eighties Doctor yeah. Who name. I, yeah, I agree. I think that they should have like had Resolution of the Daleks in the opening titles, and then at the end, before the credits, they show the full title. Yeah, I wish um, I had opening titles in the first place. I just like any excuse to um put off the Daleks. Yeah. Oh, what's the new big? Because fi- I, I I was thinking this the other day. Uh, there's a new big. They announced a new big finish story, and it's got a really great of the Daleks title. I vaguely saw. I don't really listen to that much Big Finish though. Oh, I, 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 I've got, got the money. I, but I, fo- I follow Big Finish on social media. Yeah. I don't listen to them. Uh, the, I'm t- I'm trying to get into it. Um, but I just heard. Um, I, I, so I see whenever they announce a story. Um, I'm gonna look this up because it's gonna bug me. Okay, I've got to find that the, the dude. Is he in? Ah, okay. Hello, Mr. Chisholm. Ah, yes. Are you there? Emiss- uh, uh, emissary of the Daleks. That's it. That's um, a that's a with, good one. Yeah, with Colin Baker and Nicola Bryant, and if you look at the cover, it's got the planet of the Daleks, Supreme Dalek, in it. Yeah, oh, yeah, I remember seeing that now. That went. Yeah. Yeah, and it's got the um, grey, the gunmetal grey Daleks on those hovering platforms from the comics. The, yeah, the hoverabout slash transholer discs. Yeah. See, that's uh, that's something I might just flat out just buy when yeah. it comes out. And just listen to it. Um, but I'm trying to listen to um, like the very first Big Finish stuff because they go on sale for like 99. Yeah. And the Big Finish app hashtag not sponsored. The Big Finish app is actually really good. Um, so I might need to try and listen to to more of those. Okay, I've already forgotten the code he just said. Bollocks. <laughs> <laughs> Three. I think it's, if anyone else can remember the code, because you got a bit delayed, can you see the code? <laughs> Um, just so you know, um, Demi, I've accidentally oh. messaged you some photos. No, it's not rude photos of me in a Revenge of the Cyberman helmet. Uh, I, was, I meant to send them to somebody else and accidentally sent them to you. <laughs> but... uh, just, just so you know. Um... <laughs> I just found Series 11 way more watchable than bloody... I hated Series 9 so much. That was That for a long period stopped me liking Doctor Who. Yeah, it was... Yeah, it, it was. The only one, rough, like, the only ones I, the only ones I liked in that series was I didn't mind the lake one, although I thought the second part was a bit weak. And yeah. I, 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 honestly, I'm not that big a fan of Heaven Sent. I don't. I think it's all right, but it, it only works as a whole story when you compare it with Hell Bent, which is Hell right. Bent. Yeah. So yeah, it, it's 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 a rough one because um, especially when there are so many. It's all two parters and a three parter in that series. So if one story doesn't really deliver, yeah. The problem with Moffat is he's just not a very good multi-part writer. He he, um, he he wasn't when he was show running, but he was when he when he, when he was doing his own like standalone stories. Yeah, it's what um it's what H Bomber guy says. He says um that Moffat's great at writing standalone stories, but the second you ask him to do like a whole series, it just unravels. Yeah, and I'm curious as to what um, the series would have been like if he wasn't also show-running Sherlock. Uh, because I think both Sherlock and his run on Doctor Who started off really strongly, and then just the further it went along, the, the messier it became. Can, can anyone remember where the radio is? I'm... Um, as someone who has not been paying attention to your gameplay, I can't Ah, uh, we're fucked. <laughs> I'm getting so sick of these t- three rooms. Oh, and is this the radio? Are they in one of those lockers? Bear in mind ah, I am yes. Five seconds, like behind you. I don't know. I I quickly grew tired of Moffat. The way I've always described Moffat's writing is micro clever. Where for a few seconds you think, "Oh, that's really clever," until you start to think about it. And it's like, "Oh, wait, oh, yeah. that makes no sense at all." Oh, yeah, it, it's just like um, like the the veil and the one word test se- sequences with Vastra. Oh like, fuck, I forgot about that. They're so there's nothing to them, and they but they carry themselves with such a pomposity, uh, like and just the sense <coughs> of self importance and cleverness, and it just really gets grating and alienating. Yeah. Like, yeah, like and of course, like there was. Like, I say this time and time again anecdotally, but this scene when Capaldi's on the tank with the sunglasses and the guitar, 
I just know so many people who watched that and thought, I'm done. I'm not watching this anymore. This is shit. I think that I was still clinging on, going, oh, I really like Capaldi. I hope he's alright. The scene that killed me was Missy fondling the Daleks. Hemispheres going, the dogs are mentionables. I thought, oh, fuck my life. Yeah, but there's so much... I'm going to go back and watch Buffy. <laughs> like, but yeah, there's so much bad in that two-parter. Like, like I remember, like when it was announced, like it was revealed that it was Bobby Davros. All I could think about was Billy Tracy's final yeah. fans Bobby Davros video, um, and uh, which isn't necessarily the fault of the show, but um, but and also the Daleks don't really want to kill people. It's just the suits. It's just the, the yeah. Armor, which and saying like, exterminate to reload. Fuck off. <laughs> that's terrible. What am I meant to be and, doing here? And there's also the scene when Missy and Clara are just like they're they're outside, they're sat at like a table talking, they're trying to find the doctor. And there's security all around the perimeter. No one's getting in and out except for Missy and Clara. But in order to be witty and clever, they have a dog walker just walk through. And they're like, Oh, you see that dog? You're like, oh, you're the dog and the doctor's the walker or whatever. And it's like you firstly that's whatever. But you just you've established that this is a high security perimeter. Yeah, you've just got a fucking dog walker walking through. Like, how did no one catch yeah. this at all? What's yeah? I I haven't watched Return of Doctor Mysterio because that that was at the stage after series nine. I was like, no. I have watched it once. I I also saw because it was like Matt Lucas was coming back. I thought I don't care. Although what I because like I said I haven't watched all the series ten, but what I have seen, Matt Lucas was actually all right in it. I'd compliment him on Twitter, but he's blocked me so. <laughs> Oh boy. Right, rotate the colours of the top right using the green buttons. Circling ball, take on any colour they pass under. Okay. But uh, for Clockwork Harley Quinn talking about Sherlock and that, uh, the moment it kind of went off the deep end for me, because I really like Series 1 and Series 2 of Sherlock. Uh, I agree with everything H. Farmer Guy says in his review of Sherlock after, like, Series 2. Yeah, it um, kind of, like, I like Sherlock, but it did kind of ruin it for me a bit. <laughs> yeah, 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 absolutely. But there was also um, in. Um, in ser- yeah, because the the villain of series three, spoilers for series three of Sherlock, is a guy with his own mind palace. But as a result, he doesn't ha- actually have any tangible evidence of any of the threats he's making. He just has a really good memory. Yeah, he, re- he remembers. Oh god, right, this is a bit confusing. Right, as many more blue than yellow. Okay. Yeah, more blue than yellow, yeah, and as many. Oh god, what am I doing? Okay, so. So just make a, a load of them blue, and then try and make some green and orange, okay. I think. It's, it's, it's easy for me to backseat game yeah. while, you, while you try and do it. But yes, yeah, so, so the villain of Sherlock is someone who literally has no evidence. So how is he going to blackmail you? Because he literally has no evidence. Oh, he, I just fluked it. Okay. So there's literally no threat and no stakes in Series 3. I haven't even watched Series 4, but again, I got to that stage of Series 3. And I oh, yeah, thought, so series 4's no good. I, re- so, I re-watched, um, I finally got around to watching the um, Victorian episode, and that was a bit... Well, the, the, um, the Mark Gatiss story is actually not too bad. It's got Toby Jones as the villain. Yeah. And he's a lot of fun. That, Wasn't he meant to be sort of a whole the Operation U tree sort of thing? Yeah, yeah. Well, like th- that story is kind of, it's... Um, Standalone, so you don't need to watch. Like it works well on its own. It's got a really bad cliffhanger ending, but you can actually like just watch. Yeah. It um. How many? How, I'm curious. How many views we got? I can't see because my OBS is right over that. Twenty-three. Hey. What's wrong with the two doctors? I really like the two doctors. That's kind of Attack of the Cybermen for me. I. It's probably not good, but. Five worst Doctor Who episodes ever. If, if your number one worst Doctor Who story is Resolution, no disrespect, you might want to watch more Doctor Who. I, I genuinely love Resolution. I also it's really good. The fact they put the fact they changed the Dalek sound effects has got the, the um, remembrance noise that made me so happy. I do wish there's a few. Like I said there's a few things I would change. I would have um, maybe had the Doctor bit be a bit more serious around the Dalek, but that's really about it. Yeah. Yeah, I, I agree. But I, I do like the scene with her and the, when the Daleks were revealed. I like the Dalek rucksack, which, why is that not a toy yet? I want one. Kids should be going to school with one. The problem is, I, I know a few people who are, thought, who are a bit like, oh, that's kind of hot because they're into aliens and stuff like that. And I'm like, oh. huh. Okay. Oh boy, tentacles. Well, you can't go wrong with tentacles. <laughs> 
I, if it's your thing, go for it. <laughs> Who am I to judge? Oh god, Matt, you really don't sound like you give a shit about this man. I wish this was a bit more like them actually being converted rather than nanobots just turning them into Cybermen. But yeah. I'm yeah, trying to... It's, it's, the, the issue with cyber conversion as a concept is that it kind of mostly has to take place off screen. Yeah. I, I, so at, I will give Series 10... Um, well, not in worlds are not in time in it. I can't remember the name of it. Yeah. Uh, the yeah, the yeah, conversion yeah. that was creepy. That was good. Oh yeah, that was That's, really well done. I'm I'm really, I uh, obviously it's ruined by Twice Upon a Time, but I'm really glad that Moffat did go out and he did manage to have one great concept left in him. Uh, like he had, that that two part is really good. Not, I think. Yeah, I don't think we could get like the the Doctor Who marketing boom of the the uh, RTD era like we had anymore. Oh yeah, like especially with Toys R Us not. Maybe Ex not being a thing anymore. Um, yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. It's a shame because, like I said, the, some of the toys are really good, especially when they started in the classic figures. Yeah, the, the, it's kind of hard to find a, a proper marketplace for toys now. I know B and M uh, still gets some classic sets. I've got one of the Tardises. I've got a boxed yeah. one, which I'm probably going to end up giving away at some point because I bought two. Because loads of people are like, oh my god, they're, they're, they're worth so much money, and I couldn't sell it on eBay. So <laughs> fuck it. <laughs> So I might have ended up giving that away at some point. I don't know yet, because I've got two. I just wish I'd saved up for the... Um, cause they're, apparently they're going to do a couple more, because I just want more classic police boxes. Oh, yeah, yeah. I just I prefer the classic police box over the new one. Oh, shit, the pants. See, I, I know that I would become everything I hate, but sometimes I am tempted to just buy a B&M set to, to resell it later to someone. Yeah, I don't know. I'm not buying, like, 50 of them, but just, sell a, just buy a couple. <laughs> yeah. Because there's actually, like, a pretty big B&M... Like near where I live. So yeah, but we've got a couple of them on my way. They seem to get the figures in. I got a couple of Walking Dead figures from them recently. Mm. I've got a, quite a good Michonne. Oh, what's this? World Fact Absolute Zero. There's a, oh, it's just about. Right, here's the history of centigrade and Fahrenheit. William, T William Thompson <laughs> later became Lord Kelvin. I've got, quite I quite cool. like Frontier in Space, mainly just for the cliffhanger. Oh, Fanny. The cliffhanger with the master, like, I brought some old friends for you, and there's just a shitload of Daleks behind him. It's brilliant. But I think mm. that's the, pro the problem with that song, is it does drag on a little bit too long. Yeah, yeah. If I could have a figure of anything from Doc 2, what would it be? Um, just when, while I remember... Uh, Soldied. When, when you got caught by the... Um, about to get caught by the Cyberman there, and you just yelled, oh, Fanny, that needs to be your, like, yellow condition. Like, <laughs> and then fucked. Amy, don't get stuck in the fucking scenery, you bell end. What's the, I was going to say, does, is it Amy who gets caught now? Oh, yeah, but what, she's going to get zapped unless the. Such urgency, such urgency from Amy. Come oh, fuck off, yeah. We should be more careful. Yeah, um, I'm trying to think what figure I, I genuinely like. I'd like a version of McCoy where he's got the serious face and the hat. Because either you've got him, like, serious face, no hat, or looking like a complete twat. Yeah. Amy, get your ass in here. Ooh, um, while we're here discussing merits of McCoy, favourite McCoy outfit, do you prefer the darker colour? I prefer the light. Or in Fenric? Or do you prefer the lighter one? I prefer the light. Oh. Screw this look. Oh, god damn it! <laughs> yeah, um. No, I prefer the, the grey one, but I quite like the New Adventures white suit with the little, um, Watchman pin. New Adventures? This, I need it, to see this. Go Google it. There's um, some f like fan drawings on it, and there's a few times on some of the covers. It's basically just a white suit with a red tie, and he's got like a little Watchman smiley face pin. Alright, cool. I quite like the TV oh, movie yeah, costume oh, as well. Yeah. yeah, oh yeah, I see it. That's pretty cool. Because I, I think they're trying to try tone down the question mark stuff, but obviously keep the umbrella. I, li I liked the. Because um, there's an image I'm looking at as well uh, that's also got like a young McCoy, but in his TV movie. Outfit. Yeah, and that 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 looks really cool. What's your favourite Doctor costume then? I'm curious. See, I, I think as just a standalone costume on its own, I really like um, I, I like Tom Baker's like for, like early years. But yeah, like, as maybe a proper Doctor, a Doctorly costume. I like Tenants. And all, uh, but I've, I do also have like a soft spot for Eccleston. I, I like Tenet's Blue Suit. Eccleston, Eccleston's works for that character, definitely. Oh, it's yeah, not a, definitely not a doctory outfit, but it's a mm. uh, very... Yeah, it's sort of for the character of like being 
surviving the war and all this sort of stuff. Yeah, and I, I, I like the minimalism as well. Oh, okay. Oh, well, oh, that's there! Did What's I, going on? I, I fell through the floor and then oh. I had to walk down the ladder. Because I just got to it. <laughs> well done. Yeah, um, I don't know. I, I honestly, I unironically love the Six Doctors outfit. Oh, I, I like um, uh, John Hurt's War Doctor outfit as like a precursor to Eccleston's. Yeah, I, I get. To... I just think it sort of takes something away where because it's meant to be. Isn't it meant to be the same jacket? I'm not sure. I don't think it is, but I do like that whole. Like, obviously, it wasn't planned. Uh, but it, it is like a sort of dark, uh, leathery, textured coat. Yeah. Uh, and then he, he he kind of gets something that's a bit more fitting afterwards. Uh, I also like Schalke's one as well, even though it is. Oh, okay. Yeah, Schalke's costume is pretty legit. But that that was suck in warm weather though, because it's like fifty layers. Oh yeah, yeah. There's I think layers on top of layers. Not exactly costume wise, but I think the best dress doctor is um, Pertwee by far. Okay. See Pertwee, he I don't put a single like costume that I associate with him because he's always changing. Yeah. Cool. I quite it like means that. that. There's not much in the way of consistency. I um I don't I can't I was doing the, the um green coat uh Smith costume. I always put I think his favourite costume of mine's the um series seven yes oh no series seven B I'm thinking series six. I think probably should have stayed in those uh white uh, clothes that he got put in hospital for at the beginning of Spearhead. I think he should have stayed in the the t Amy, if you get zapped again, I swear to God. Oh, God's sake. I, I think he, um... I think Pope should have stayed in the white t-shirt he had in um, Inferno with just the tattoo showing. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> just the shower cap. Yeah. <laughs> oh, God. Just the entire series is just the Brigadier trying to keep eye contact. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That'd be great. Um, yeah, I'm good, but I'm just watching you, um... Try and get through this corridor. Yeah, um, I think you are leaving it like way too early to sneak behind uh, it. I, cause, uh, you, cause, uh, I think you're at the field of view, but apparently they can spin round and see you. See, it's Amy who's letting the side down. It's always is the AI is atrocious in this. The yeah. AI. Right, three, two. What if he turns on now? I'm humped. Hey. Yeah, no, I, I really like this 7B costume. Get in there quick, 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 quick. quick. Oh, Amy, yeah. don't you dare. Oh, no. Yeah, so I, I, see, I, why does Tharis21 keep on shouting, I'm Tharis, exclamation mark, exclamation mark? I'm not sure yeah. if it is that Tharis. It might be a troll. I'm not sure yet. Either, either, either way, well, no, it's, if it's a like, troll, yeah. if it's troll mayor, if it's actually Tharis, I still don't want to talk to him anyway, so it's... But, yeah, but it's also just, if it is you, why announce maybe, your presence? Maybe, maybe, like, maybe, yeah. maybe it's a Pokemon. That's all he can say. Oh, yeah. And speaking, speaking of which, Bill Nye confirmed as a furry. What? <laughs> if anyone's seen Detective Pikachu. Oh, I've, I've still got to say it. It's all right. It's okay. Yeah! Speaking of... Wait. Oh, more collectibles. Yeah, I got the seven Doctor card. Hooray. I, I think my my Schalke love is a bit for me, but I do generally really like his Doctor. I know the stories are... I, I don't know. I, I like the story. I like the concept of the Schalke themselves. I think the weakest part is Alison. I think she's just a pretty boring companion. Yeah, yeah, I agree. But I just really like Richard E. Grant's performance on it. And I just wish we could have seen more. Mm. Who... I can't uh, I'm trying to remember who wrote... It was Paul... Paul Cornell. Cornell wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah. The book, the um, add-on book they did on the uh, Vampire Cult site was pretty good. Oh, I see, I've never read it. Yeah, it's uh, basically just like energy vampires and stuff like that. Yeah, I, I wish Telltale had a, a bash at Doctor Who. Or there's going to be something similar to that, that'd be great. Yeah. Uh, that's the sort of format that works. Yeah, well one, like, obviously Telltale's not a thing anymore, which is a thing. Yeah. Well, I think because they hit on a solid formula, that's not exclusive to them. Like you've got Life is Strange, you've got so many other like adventure games, uh, and people picking up um, where they've left off with properties and such. I I almost um, had my uh, Price Field Life is Strange shirt on today. Oh yeah. Yeah, I, I yeah. thought I'd try and keep some class. See, I think I've um I've got like the first episode of Life is Strange on Steam because they gave it away for free. At some yeah, point. I think it still is free. It's just to try and hook you in to get the rest of them. Mm. Uh, Draconian Menace, what are you? Mildly annoyed. That's. So, he has some of the. The Shalk Doctor has some fantastic lines. See, I, I remember he. 
it's he gives um i think it's maybe in the the final part of the the penultimate episode where he's basically just monologuing what the shalker are going to do and like you hang on his every word yeah like, he's great at the exposition and derek Jacobi as the master is you can't go wrong you've just missed us struggling with this game don't worry it's snuffing porn <laughs> how many oh, flavors that's the first thing you went yeah Oh god, I, I've only ever seen the first episode of Class because I just watched that and I thought, no. Oh, I've I've watched none of Class. Oh, the first episode, so the first line of Class where they talk about the is it the Bachel test? Bechtel. Bechtel test. Thank you. That's literally the first line of the entire show, and I was like, oh fuck off, penis. <laughs> uh, I prefer the the Mako Mori, which is based off of uh, Mako Mori from Pacific Rim. Right. Uh, which is. Um, you have at least one female character who has her own narrative, which does not exist to support the narrative arc of the male character. Yeah, that's it. I ironically, Mako fails the test in Pacific Rim Uprising. What was I going to say? Yeah, if I was Doctor Who showrunner, um, I'd keep main. It seems similar to what they did with Series 11, was keep it mainly serialised. And hire Patrick Ness to write every episode. Yes. Every episode. I'm, I'm sure he can write fine, just can't do spin offs. Every episode is just has a class reference. Oh god! Would anyone get it though? Because I don't think many people watch class enough to get the reference. Ah oh, well, that, that, that's because that, that means that those who have watched it will be even more dedicated. Oh. So the, the closest connection I've ever had to class is that Five Who fans video, which I helped to film of the class premiere. Oh and it was god! One of the funniest things I've ever been a part of. Like I remember, like F1 City hyped up. Do you remember, like Doctor has this thing was like, oh, we're gonna do a big announcement at midnight, and it's always something shit. Oh yeah, yeah. Like F1 was really hyped up for class, uh, the, the announcement of the spin-off. Like, oh, what's it gonna be? What's it gonna be? And it's like, oh, we got a new thing called class, and everyone's like, what? It's like, yeah, I think um, sometimes the fandom massively um, over exaggerates how big the hardcore section of Doctor Who fandom is. Uh, because I think most of the people who watch it are very, very casual, which is completely fine. But it, it means that if you were to do like a here's a midnight announcement, it is only going to be for like hardcore niche fans. It's yeah. never going to be like a trailer reveal or a big casting. Announcement. I th I think the reason why they do it at midnight is because then it's a lot of the American audiences can catch it. Oh yeah, yeah, maybe. I've heard the um, I've not watched the Canine spin-off, but I've heard it's pretty bad because I remember watching oh, I remember watching Billy Garrett John and Matt Toffler's video on it, which got like. Proper fucked up in the um, copyright bullshit, then it. Oh yeah, that's that's messy. That's yeah. It should it shouldn't ever get to that stage. It's annoying. But for uh, yeah, Canine and Company is no good either. I've not seen. I need. I can't believe I've me, not seen Canine and Company. Me, Billy, and Dan watched it yesterday once again for the season eighteen thing. It's, we were expecting fun cheese. It's just really boring. Yeah, the, the, I think the title sequence is the reason why. That's, that's the only thing people talk about. is the title sequence. But the title sequence was clearly filmed in like one afternoon. But it's the and it's re yeah use footage from its own sequence. It's the fact though that um that if some reason like it could have been just forgotten about completely, and no one would have given a shit if Canine Company wasn't canon. But then in the Five Doctors, Canine turns up, and then in the new series, Canines with Sarah Jane. So they decide to make this one really shit spin off canon. <laughs> well, the thing is, because I think the original plan was Canine wasn't a gift from the Doctor, it was meant to be secretly a gift from the Master. Yeah, yeah. Or something yeah, like that. Yeah, that, that's correct. The season 18 booklet goes into, like, into details that it was meant to be like a, a rogue agent for the master or something which is hilarious the master a robot dog is really Im cool. imagine though this is the master being so his plans being so shit he has to use canine to go after someone who's not even traveling with the doctor anymore yeah well the, the, well, the thing about the weird thing about canine and company it's much like adventure success and just never got a second series because canine and company was watched by in terms of pure viewership, got more higher viewing figures than almost every single season 18 story, including Tom Baker's regeneration. Oh, Christ. So, it, yeah, it was viewed by, like, nearly 9 million people, and on the day it was broadcast, there was actually a blackout in the Northwest, which could have hindered its, like, further reach in, to audiences. So it actually did really well. They just never got a proper series going. Oh, I've got a Sonic this. No. If in doubt, oh, yes, I do. Okay. Oh, hello. Okay. 
I've I've been paying even less attention to this than I did with um, the da- like one. <laughs> I think cause at least the Dalek one you had you could talk about the um the weird Dalek design in it where they like they were like the flat back versions of the paradigm. Yeah, yeah. I wish they kept them about. The paradigm. Yeah, I, I prefer them how they looked in the silent with the metallic paint scheme and the flat back, but. Yeah, I I, th- I think they had promise, but promise it just never happened. I, oh yeah, I, I remember this cutscene where the Doctor gets like immediately complies with with the cyber leader's demands and just doesn't even put up a fight. Fuck's sake. I um yeah, I wish they kept the uh the the um, powered on Daleks as like higher up ranking Daleks and keep the bronze ones. Yeah. Oh, Amy's having a wave. Yeah, but yeah, it's one of the few things that Ilum actually did well. Uh, I'm just stepping away from the laptop for five seconds, back in a moment. Okay. One, two, three, four, five. God's sake, Trilby, just full of lies. Okay, I'm back. That was seven seconds. Fuck. Everything you've ever said now is discredited. All your videos on right, Doctor Viewing for this. You liar! You need to screw up twice now for us to be even. It's me! I've probably screwed up. I've been walking about the same cold off for 20 minutes. I'm pretty sure I've done it enough. Yeah, well, that's fine. This is just a catalyst for Doctor Who conversation. <laughs> Reprogram and I'll ask this fucking one again. Right. More, more yellow than green, and as many purples as blues. Right. Um, Mario Fanboy 15. Does anyone remember that Destiny? Destiny of the Doctor's video game with the Master. Yes! I've, I've watched all the cutscenes I desperately want to play. I had it. No, how? I had it as a kid. I Do had you lo- still have it? No. I want to get it again, but... Uh, I want to play I want to play Dalek Attack again on the Amiga. Oh, yeah, that, was, that was fun. And there was the great... Um, I say great, it was probably shit. That... Um, Doomsday, Doctor, like Daleks versus Cybermen. Oh, but the, oh, yeah, and some of the games they did for like 2005, 2006 on the website were great. And yeah, that whole, do you remember like the, the fact that Clive's website was constantly being updated by Mickey Smith? Yeah, that's um, yeah, and there was um, oh, I can't remember. I even included this I, in my master's thing because I for my um final project at uni i did um, that meet space pilot which ha- which was like transmedia where you were able to go on like facebook and follow the social media profiles of the i character. vaguely remember that so yeah that was um part of my written assessment for it was looking at transmedia entertainment and a lot of it was doctor who where they would do that sort of additional marketing where mickey smith and clyde um and, and clive sorry and uh, other characters would have their own websites and forums and between episodes of Doctor Who, you'd go on the website and you'd take you'd take part uh, take part in it. Uh, right, so I can I'm, I'm on eBay now and I can buy Destiny of the Doctors for twelve ninety nine used, but I have no idea if it will work. I think you can fully run support. I've I, I've completely fucked this up. What am I doing? Microsoft Windows ninety five. I think that should. I think I've seen people play it. What I, more yellow than. It even comes in a fancy like the long box. Looks, but yeah, it looks like a VHS type box. Yeah, uh, all, box is all P- like how long have you ever PC game? Because back in the day, all games would come in a long box with these massive boxes. Oh yeah, I remember now. Yeah, yeah. I remember when I bought um, a Lego Island two or something, yeah, and it came in one of those big boxes. I I've still not actually properly read the Scratch Man. Um, Plot synopsis. I know Tom Baker recently did the book, didn't he? Mm. I'd like to give that a read, but I've seen like uh, in um, one of my nearby Waterstones. It's got a full display for for Scratchman. Like there's a That's shelf cool. which is just full of Scratchman. I remember one time W. E. Smith had like a TARDIS thing with just loads of old videos, and I managed to get hold of it after they got rid of it. Yeah. What the fuck am I doing here? Right, more yellow than green. Okay, w- I've done that. W- W. H. Smiths was where I bought my first ever Doctor Who DVD. My first ever uh, one was Two Doctors, I think. Mine was uh, Revelation of the Daleks and Earthshock. Um, and I remember my copy of Revelation of the Daleks. Uh, the disc wasn't working. Uh, so in part one, there's a scene when two of the staff members of the mortuary are going down a, a corridor. And it would just play that scene over and over again. But because of the way the music was, it actually just seemed like... Hey! Meant to be part of the episode, and they were just going down the corridor for a long time. 
Um, so it took like a solid three minutes until I realized something was wrong. Oh. I was a very stupid child. Yeah, I'm still trying to collect my um, Doc 2 DVDs. I'm gonna get them. Uh, quite a few people on Twitter bought me some. I just posted like a wish list and I ended up getting like. Shard, oh, cool. I got Shard, I got um, City of Death, which I wanted for fucking years. Mm. I've still got Watch Shard though, because the problem is I've only got a Blu ray player downstairs, my PC hasn't got one built in. Uh, so, uh, n- neither has mine, but I've bought a external. Blu-ray I think I'm going to have to. It's like it's only 20 quid, it works really well. Oh shit, all the ones I saw were like 60. Oh, oh shit, um, I'm... I'll, I'll yeah, check me a link, because then cause I really want to watch the Shard thing. I think it was on eBay uh, that I bought it, for like 20 quid. Well, if you find if you find a link, chuck it to me and I'll. I I will chuck you that link. I'll try Sweet. and find it. But yeah, uh, yeah, because that's um, one reason I'm able to do some of the Blu-ray unboxings because I'm, I'm able to get Blu-ray footage on my yeah. uh, laptop now. Uh, so the first time it was used in a video was my dialect shot by shot. That's Blu-ray I I, I I remember you bought me one. Cyber uh, Cybergen. I don't know how to say it. But yeah, I remember you bought me one. I couldn't remember what it was, but yeah, it was Time Lash. So I've still got to get around to watching. Am I going up here or yeah, I'm going down here. I think I've nearly got all the Con Baker stories. I've had all the um, McCoy stories for a long while. Mm. So I, I've kind of stopped um, collect. I stopped collecting the DVDs years ago, but now I'm I'm definitely kind of stopping because of these Blu-rays. Blu-ray collections. Which, My problem uh, is I've got so many of the DVDs. I've not bothered getting. Yeah, most of, yeah, most of mine are in storage. I need to get um, what uh, classic or new who. Uh, Characters should get a spin off. Um, Ace. I, f- I think so. If you're just getting it on a bit now, and uh, I, d- I don't, oh, I don't want to see, like, because I know they sort I of, te- I know they teased Ace being a, um, like a philanthropist or whatever it was in, um, Sarah Jane Adventures. I don't want to say Ace like that. I want to say Ace like the, um, on the time bike for the new Adventures. Yeah. Um, okay. Um, I'm sending you a link via Facebook of this blue oh, drive. It's 30, 30 pounds. Ace is my favourite companion by far. Oh, Ace is awesome. I really want a replica red jacket, but going from how much of a struggle Crystal D had to get the right badges, fuck that. Oh, yeah. It depends how committed you are to, no. to the badges. Not committed enough? I'm not committed to anything. <laughs> why, do you think it takes, why do you think it took so long to get this fucking stream done? You, you, the only thing you committed to is getting all of the collectible yes. adventure games. Um, first classic story was Remembrance for me. Because obviously I... I can't remember how old I was when I first started watching Doctor Who, but it was definitely before I was four years old. Because my earliest memory... Oh, shit. Okay, fuck it. Speed run! Oh, it actually works. <laughs> my, um... Yeah, my, um... Earliest memory is sitting in my living room and the trailer for the TV movie coming up. And as soon as you hear the Daleks in it, I just remember screaming. Yeah. Even though the Daleks aren't even in it. Well, they are at the very beginning, but they used a different Dalek voice. They use like one from the TV series rather than the awful Philip Siegel Exterminate ones. Uh, yeah, my my um, first memory of it was um, twofold. Firstly, um, Santaran experiment was just watching it. I think at my grandma's house, hmm. and I, the cliffhanger happened. He takes the helmet off, and I just run out. <laughs> uh, and also, um, maybe a couple of years later, I didn't know what I was watching, but it was just it was Dalek Invasion of Earth, Peter Cushing film. Yeah. On these. Um, and it was just a load of scenes in the forest. I had not seen any Daleks for ages, and Susan is like in this hut in the middle of the woods, opens up the curtains and the Daleks there, and that was like a really good, that's yeah. actually a really good scare for that. Film. Oh god, is this going to be the fact of chairs? Oh no, sub conversion. I'm glad they've sort of moved away from the brain in a robot suit thing, which the new series had. Um, you, yeah, sorry, you cut out that. Sorry. I didn't hear that yeah, I'm kind of glad that they got rid of the um, brain in the robot suit thing from the RTD era, and it's more proper conversion now. Mm, yeah. What am I doing here? Oh, I, I honestly, I prefer the Cushing films to the TV versions. Uh, I think um, the Daleks is better than Doctor Who, and, but 2150 AD is better than Dalek Invasion of Earth. I think the character works better in the TV shows, but the problem with, oh. especially with. Um, uh, the Daleks is it just drags on so fucking long. Yeah, it's the stuff in the caves as they're trying to sneak into the city that kills it. Yeah, it's the the, the, the entire single episode where they're trying to jump over a fucking 
hole. Oh yeah, yeah. That's the problem. Like, I, I like Hatless stories, but they do drag on so much. Yeah, but but twenty one fifty AD, I actually think, for what it is, a sixties, relatively low budget action sci fi film, it's mm. actually pretty good. It's a good standalone story, and Bern- Bernard Cribbins is is funny in it. Um, and the, there's actually some fun physical comedy with the Robo Men. Oh, what kind of the funny. old the miming, yeah. They really liked that music cue, but the, it does work for me. I, I do enjoy watching it. Yeah, I haven't seen it for a while. I've, I've seen the first one, obviously. I haven't watched the second one for a long while. I just love the design of the Daleks. What the shit am I doing? Oh, I've done it. Okay. <laughs> Let's get out of here. But I really like the movie Daleks. I can see why for the 2005 design, they sort of borrowed a lot from them. Yeah, the uh, I'm kind of disappointed that they didn't do the chase in the end. Yeah, I, I think just because the second film didn't do very well. Yeah. I'm w- I'm wonder if they're going to keep the 2013 Daleks when Jody eventually no, 2013 Cybermen sorry when they eventually give Jody a Cyberman story. I no, I hope that they do a top to bottom redesign. I want to see something similar to the um, Tenth Planet ones, considering how popular that story was and when they brought them back for series ten, I'd yeah. be surprised if they did go for something a bit more creepy. Yeah, yeah, I think they need to lean into that. I think considering what they did with um, with resolution. Yeah, I think I think maybe subverting the expectations or doing something a bit outside the box might be the name of the game for it. I hope they stick with it. The only thing that annoys me is all the people who are going, "Oh, I don't like the new design of the Daleks." That's clearly not the new design. That's a one-off. Yeah, yeah it's clearly a t- like just yeah, it is. I think it's obviously a one-off, but I think people just want to be angry about stuff. Saying that, it's a really good design. I really like the uh, resolution Dalek. Yeah, even as just a one-off, it looks yeah. really cool and distinct. And it kind of works in because it ties into the. Um, Remembrance novelization because remember they talk about a scout Dalek in that, which is a more streamlined Dalek. I actually own that novelization. It's I've good. Read it. It's good because that was the um, that and Curse of Fennec were the two novelizations they did, which had unlimited word count to sort okay. of p- prepare for the Virgin New Adventures. Ah, oh, cool. Because they obviously they were looking at expanding the series beyond the TV show. Yeah. So they sort of went, oh, we'll give it a trial, and that's why we, in because in the moments when it talks a lot about the uh, uh, Cartmel master plans, there's a lot of stuff about the other and all this sort of thing. So I, um, after our talk of the Peter Cushing films, I've just got um, oh for fuck's sake, this fucking puzzle. <laughs> so yeah, now all I want to do is just um, like re-edit resolution, but with the Robo Men music. In the- <laughs> <laughs> that's the, that's every major music. I, I know. Benji Clifford went on for a while where he's basically re-editing d- classic Dalek music into that scene where they find the mutant on the wall. Ah, that'd be cool. That worked really well with the Membert's music. <laughs> oh no, but now they just need to replace that music with Robo-Men music. When Look, they- I'm surprised Benji didn't do that because he loves those movies. Da, 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 da. Da. Like, more green than yellow and more purple than blue. Do you think that, like, this is actually like puzzles the Doctor solves and he just... I hope I hope he has to suffer like I do. Yeah. Like more... Gr- the Doctor and do shit puzzles like him or her. <laughs> green. Green. More green than orange, more purple than blue. That's right, isn't it? Purple, purple. Blue. More green. Any more green. Oh, f- f- this was a game designed for children. <laughs> it's for kids. <sighs> green, green. There we go. Oh, I'm a small bunged up. Hay fever. Um, I think it might be. Yeah. Yeah, mine's. Oh, I think we're getting to the the finale. Yay! Like, fuck for that. <laughs> but yeah, I've hit record this time, so this will actually end up on YouTube. I think I hit record just after the um, your introduction, but there should be like the twi- uh, Twitch p- past broadcast on here, though, so hopefully I can just rip that one. Also, sorry if there's microwave stuff happening in the kitchen. <laughs> Life goes on. <laughs> I had a pizza, so I'm fine. I'm fucking stuffed. Where, where did I park the TARDIS? I can't, was it down here? 
Isn't it upstairs? In, like on the surface? Well, we'll soon find out. <laughs> yep. <laughs> oh, God, no. The, the music for Series 11 was painfully good. I've not actually listened to much of the album. So. I've not listened. Oh, no, I've gone the wrong way. I'm going to die. Well, you could have told me that before I go down this corridor, Doctor. Um, I, I enjoy the meme that people have had of um, oh. uh, characters in media stubbing their toes or injuring themselves. And the thirteenth Doctor theme starts playing. I've not seen that. Oh yeah, I've seen, yeah, and it's like ah. Oh. <laughs> so whenever someone stubs their toes or injures themselves, that music starts playing. I think I've seen one where um, it's in The Simpsons when Homer's in the bath and Bart smashes a chair. Over oh his my head. god! If you find that, link that to me. I might. I. I I don't know how I'll find it. I might just recreate it. Yeah. Um, but um, I don't know how to put video footage from my laptop onto Twitter. Ah. It's really interesting. Yeah, I've, I've got to convert it. I'll link it to you. Yes. Um, who would I cast as the master? Oh, God. I, oh, that would be great. I, I think Charles Dance. I think I still say Charles Dance would be great. Oh, he, but he's one of those obvious choices. So yeah. probably won't do it. I th I think Series 11's music was not as m memorable as Mary Gold's, but Mary Gold's was deliberately meant to be earwormy. Whereas yeah, yeah. it's more it's a uh, is it Segan? I can't pronounce his name. Uh, Sagan. Thank you. Sagan Akinola, Yes. Um, he's his is more sort of like classical classic Doctor Who music where it's behind underneath layers of the story and doesn't for because Mary Gold's stuff often would force emotions like this is the part where you've got to feel sad. This is the part where you've got to feel happy. Yeah, and plus, come on, that new theme tune is fucking legit. Oh, the, the theme tune's amazing. Ah, oh, he, he we finally got we finally got a new series theme with the middle eight's good. So I think it's the whole theme. I think it's maybe my favorite. Yeah, it's uh, my favorite version. new one. Uh, yeah, at least of the revived. Yeah. Oh, I forgot that the um, end credits like that whole. It cuts off halfway through the middle eight. Uh, but it, the credits um, actually had the crime room whales. Oh, all right. I think that's funny. Can I, can I see my can I see my yeah. collectibles? Yeah, let's go through the collectibles. Bear in mind, I'm going to be five seconds behind you. So yeah, uh, where the hell oh. do I see them? Oh, maybe no. You, you never them. <laughs> help! Help! <laughs> um, I have no idea. Oh no, I think you actually have to play an episode and go through the menu. I don't really care enough about the collectible. I forget. I'll go through the. Oh. The beginning of the Cyberman one again. Just oh no, Act One. Fuck it. Just gonna have a look and see what my collectibles I've already got. Because this is a good chat, and we might as well keep it running for a few more minutes. <laughs> but yeah, um, I'd like to see um, Julian Bleach come back as Davos again. Yeah, yeah. Oh, um, there's um, someone might have uploaded it, but there was um, at Graham Harper's panel at Warp last year. They um they were showing essentially B roll footage from Journey's End. Yeah. And there's um there's the t there's the monologue he does when he's like when he's screaming the destruction of reality itself, and he played a take where he essentially whispered that speech. That'd be um, cool. I could yeah, yeah that's a lot more like Gwisha. Uh yeah, but but what uh, what happened? Because when he was talking about the process of which takes do they use for what. When um, Bleach does that speech and he like whispers the final line, he kind of sinks into his seat. Uh, and Graham Hub was saying that he kind of sensed that Julian wasn't happy with that take either. Yeah. Um, so they did another one where he does scream it at the top of his lungs, and that's the version they went for. But I was uh, like second row, like watching the panel, and the person next to me when the whispering seg when the whispering version was played, because we'd never actually we'd never spoken. Yeah. Uh, but she leant over to me and was like, "That's such a good take. They should have gone for that." Yeah. One. And I partially agree, but it's also just if the actor also thinks that they can get a better take. Out yeah. Of it, you kind of it's it, if the actor thinks that they weren't happy with it and they might want to go for another one, it's kind of a joint decision. Um. What was your so yeah? I've just seen we're looking at some of the other questions. What was your favorite episode of series eleven then? Uh, Demons of the Punjab. Yeah. Oh god, no! I don't want to have to watch Matt Smith's all. Ah, oh, there we go. Collectibles. Fuck all that. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah. Um, teams of the Punjab. Um, I also. Um, I wasn't. Um, I wasn't as. Um, yeah. There we go. Collectibles in the menu. I liked um, Rosa a lot, but not as much as everyone else. So it was. It was Demons. Uh, it takes you away, and Resolution. Those are like my top three. I really like Wounded Fell to Earth. I, I like it as well. Um, 
But I think when like it doesn't stand up against stories like the Eleventh Hour or, mi- or maybe mm. even Robots, which I think are the best uh, post regeneration stories in my opinion. I I don't know. I'm still um, Spearhead for me. Um, oh yeah, Spearhead's really good. Yeah, yeah. I I just wish the rest of Doctor Who looked like Spearhead when they all shot <laughs> yeah, on yeah. film. Yeah, um, it's, it's better audio, but yeah, it looks good. Yeah, the audio was. As anyone someone pointed out, maybe watched was like, oh god, the audio was trash in this. Right, mm-hmm. so I'm missing nine, eleven, I assume. One, two, three, four. Oh, I will guess the eleventh Doctor isn't in these, so it's gonna be yeah. But um, uh, Frazzle is the bomb in the chat says Demons of the Punjab were so emotionally manipulative, and I, I kind of get that. But then again, when you look at stories like say Fires of Pompeii. And like other like really emotionally charged stories, I I think subtlety isn't really on the table a lot. For it's it's Doctor Who, Doctor, Doctor in general isn't very subtle. Let's be honest, especially with, yeah, especially new who the emotional stuff is very on the nose, which is absolutely fine. I I but I think um, I'd be curious when people do bring up these examples. I'm curious as to whether or not they like certain other stories, like when people say you know Series Eleven was way way too political. It's like fair enough if you don't like that. But did you have these complaints for Planet of the Ood? Did you have them for Turn Left? Or are you only just now having them? Yeah. I, I, that's kind of what you have to ask. Yeah, it's... Like I said, I... Like, sometimes it's a little bit on the nose, but other times, like... It's Doctor Who, again, it's always on the fucking nose. Like, people who think Series 11 wasn't subtle should go back and watch, like, the end ten minutes of Invasion of the Dinosaurs where the Doctor's literally just going on a rant about... Environmental and like pollution and all that. Yeah, and the Sunmakers was only written because Robert Holmes was pissed off. His, yeah, pissed off at his tax return. I mean, like, like, oh, Doctor's never been political. Yeah, sorry, mate. The the first ever monster the Doctor fought are literally Nazis. And there is in on an on unearthly child is they literally have a direct call for socialism. Yeah, <laughs> like I I, I can't remember who, like someone was like it should never have been political, and I say. Like if you get rid of the like if you get rid of the in your face political stuff, it would never would have made it to the dialects. Yeah. To be fair, I can't really remember much of it in Lovely Child because I just watched the first episode over and over. And... I, I I recently rewatched it for the Twitch uh Twitch watchers Doctor Who. Yeah. It, in my opinion it holds up, but then again I've I've kind of always liked all of an unearthly child. I do, I love I think the first episode is brilliant, probably the best yeah. introduction they could have given to Doctor Who. And yeah, just the, I just find the rest just the kind of bit Caveman going ugh most of the time. It's a bit. Mm. Yeah, I, I I get that criticism, and I I I agree with everyone else in a sense that it peaks with part one. Like the caveman stuff is the least interesting part of yeah. it. Yeah, but I, I do like the the like supposed civilized mature characters from the sixties have gone back to the caveman era, and they are just completely out of their element, and they could die at any moment. I I like that omnipresent threat of just them yeah. existing in that time. And I, th- I think that works really well. I've honestly, um, uh, complete story wise, out of the first three, I think the best one's Edge of Destruction. I love Edge of Destruction. In my opinion, it's the weakest, but I still admire it. I've, I, I've, I, I think if they had a bit more of a budget to it, like when they could have actually shown the clocks melting and stuff like that, that could have been fantastic. Yeah, I think just the, um, some of the classic sort of shortcomings of Doctor Who let it down a lot. Yeah, that, but that's a solid trilogy of like opening stories. Like that, that beginnings box set that two entertained it. That's a good box set. Yeah, a um, lot of the documentaries in that are quite good as well. Oh yeah, those are fa- those are really good. I was rewatching a lot of the documentaries of like Dalek stories for my shot by shot video, and yeah, there's a lot of great stories from that box set. And... I quite like the fact with the um, re-release of Remembrance of the Daleks, they give you the Davos documentary on there because that was already just part of the Davos collection set they did. Okay. And then they for the um, special edition of uh, Remembrance, they chucked it on a separate disc. Uh, so I think yeah, I, I, I think the original release of Remembrance had different music. I think there's some licensing problems. Yeah. And all the music in the calf was wrong. And also, I think the Dalek gun sound effect wasn't transferred properly to stereo or something like that. Okay. I, I can only vaguely remember because I never had that version of it. I got the special edition. But apparently yeah. the, um, the Dalek gun sound effect just sounds really like... That's it. Yeah. Because I, I know, I know, Savo- um, Spearhead. They had to change the music in the factory. I'm not sure if yeah. it's different on the Mannequin Madness or the Blu-ray. I've not just compared them all. Mm. It's always sucks when they have to change something like that. So I'm just looking at um, uh, because I was just thinking back to um, the New Beginnings trilogy with um, and that's a that, good set. Yeah, well, yeah. Well, that box set. It's also got an abridged version of Marco Polo. 
um because that's like mostly missing yeah and um they had like an abridged like half hour version of oh sorry it. you oh you mean the beginnings so the new beginnings is the um four fifth oh. one so that's the one oh, with yeah. that's um track and logopolis and castrovalva yes that, that's a good set as well i think out of those three castrovalva is good but it's, it's the weakest of the three oh, but for the yeah, it's alright. So I'm just seeing uh, someone in there done a theatre adaptation of one of the Idavos plays. That's pretty cool. Oh, I know they did that um, that uh, school in America recently. They did a play adaption of Alien. Yes, and, that looks um, cool. Sigourney Weaver went. Sigourney Weaver went yeah. to visit them. Can actually play on YouTube now. I, I have heard it's now on YouTube. I want to see the new. They did some short films, didn't they, recently for Alien for its anniversary? Yeah, my friend's yeah. massive into. Alien, not sure if they're in the chat at the moment. They were modding, but they might be still a bit of a high mouth. But yeah, they look really good. It's just I haven't seen Alien Covenant yet, but apparently it's trash. So oh, it that, is trash. Yeah, I'm not that fussed about it. I've not been fussed about an Alien film since Aliens. So yeah, I, I, mind you, thing was really good. Like um, Alien Isolation was fantastic. The game. Uh, so I've not I've not played it, but I, I want to. Yeah, that's I I've played it. I'm not very good at it though. Uh, I think uh, the franchise peaked with Aliens Colonial Marines. Oh, I God. I think that's where... Um, I think they should quit while they're ahead after that. <laughs> just, just watching game. Jim Jim Sterling lose his shit about that. That's fucking hilarious. Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah uh, it's, that's off. And Randy Pitchford leaving a USB of porn at a medieval times re- restaurant. It's, it's, oh, a, it's, fun. it's okay. What, my first uh, stream, I nearly flashed my Twitter because I've got TweetDeck. Which has, oh, yeah. which has my porn account on there as well, so people nearly saw some of the porn accounts I was following. I no. didn't even know you had that, that porn account. It's, it's just one I just follow accounts on, but I nearly slipped and <laughs> showed porn on Twitch. So that's that was awkward. Oh, classic, Jimmy. I mean, if, I think the good thing about the um, iDavos plays is they can be sort of viewed standalone, so you don't need a lot of heavy continuity, which can be a big problem. Like, I found that a big problem with a lot of Moffat era stuff, whereas... Yeah, the Moffat era, a lot of the stuff was like, especially, I, I still can't get over Twice Upon a Time being the Christmas special. Because oh, people must have been so, like, the casual audience would have been so confused. Like, oh, there's, there's Sidemen here. What? Oh, wait, uh, there's, there's this old guy who, oh, he's, he's the doctor. Oh, um, he's vagenomating as well. Like, that must have been so fucking confusing. Yeah. It's confusing for the casual audience. And the, the proper fans aren't going to give a shit because fuck knows who David Bradley was playing. Yeah. I'm, I am, because I sort of said like years before it happened that they should do a multi dot story with David Bradley as the first. I just wish it was a better story. I say I disagree with that because I thought um, David Bradley was fantastic as Hartnell, but when he yeah. played the, the bit, the weakest parts of Adventure in Space and Time, other parts where he was trying to be the first Doctor. Yeah. So and I always said I don't think they should. People were like, oh, we should do recreations of classic episodes. No, I don't think it worked. And then they yeah, did I'm, this. I was like. Oh. Yeah, I don't think they should do proper recreations, but I think just f- for a multi-doctor story, I, I think you can. I think that could that could have worked a bit better. Yeah, multi-doctor yeah, would have worked, but because I think even Richard Herndall isn't like a perfect heart. I I, I, I prefer Herndall to Bradley by far. I, I'd, I'd personally say that they're on par, but then again, like I think as an audience member, you kind of have to go in. Yeah, I think the problem the problem with them, they both go to two opposite ends of the first doctor, so Herndall's very aggressive and. Mm. Mm. And then David Bradley's a bit too grandfatherly and cuddly. Yeah. But also there is, in Five Doctors, when you have the actual Susan, and she's not with the Hartnell. Yeah. That's then, that's just Jarvan. Like, I'm not going to claim I have a massive emotional attachment. A twinkle in my dad's eye when that happens. Yeah. Um, but, you know, I, it, just watching it, it, you feel... It's probably more me than anything. But if you get what I'm on about. Yeah, I like I, said, I I do like the Five Doctors, but it is very fan wanky in places as well. Yeah, and that, but, but, that, but that's the idea of it. Yeah, with with a multi Doctor anniversary children in need special. Yeah, that's what you're in for. But when you have something like Twice Upon a Time, which is also trying to be a standalone story. Yeah, it's not an anniversary thing. It's a proper regeneration special. Yeah, I think Twice Upon a Time might have worked slightly better but the stupid sexism bullshit if it was more just a standalone story but the fact it's this big it's a big story it's the regeneration story it's a Christmas special the yeah, fact it was quote, that that's the biggest problem yeah to, to quote the ninth doctor it's a different formality get you 
Yeah. It's that... F- oh, I don't get why he... I know, I know why he did it. He's trying to be clever. Like, oh, the Doctor used to be sexist, but now he's going to be a woman. But the first Doctor was never like that. Yeah. Ever. If anything, the most sexy Doctor probably is Pertwee. Because he does a lot of things where he's saying to Joe, make the coffee and that sort of thing. I thought <laughs> yeah. you were here to make the tea. He's like, oh, okay, it's fine. It's fine. Yeah, see, I don't even know if it was... I, I would... I don't know if it's actually on record. I don't even know if Moffat knew who he was going to regenerate into at the time of writing the Doctor. I, I he, he must have. He wouldn't put that all that sexism stuff in there just for. I'm mind f- you, it's Moffat. He probably did put it in there just for joking. Yeah, oh, that's say, lucky. Oh uh, yeah, I yeah. Like I said, I just I've I know series eleven isn't perfect, but I have enjoyed it a lot more than I did the past yeah. few series. I, I, yeah, I, I think. Um, if I, I might actually do a proper ranking video in the near future, but I and I know I've got a, for some reason I've got a reputation online as that guy who adores does not say anything critical about series eleven. I think if if I were to do a ranking, it would maybe be around the middle. I'm actually not yeah same not about series eleven. I just I like it. Yeah, like I said, it's not the best series, but it's watchable and it's I enjoy quite a few parts of it. And like say, yeah. uh, series seven A, I don't really. Yeah, series 7, 8 or series 9 and 10 or I can't really sp- I need to watch the rest of series 10 I've only seen a few episodes from it Cause that, series 10 yeah because that was the stage where I was just like I don't give a shit anymore S- series 10 in I don't know if I'm in the majority I actually think series 10 is Capaldi's best season I've heard that a lot I, so I really the problem is I don't like who his doctor turned into I really liked him in his in series 8 where he was bit of a dick basically <laughs> Yeah, yeah. And then he, he sort of seemed to turn more. He went to sort of. You can tell what happened with series nine. The, the um, production team were like, "Oh no, he's too mean." That we've got to make him more like Matt Smith and David Tennant, and it just doesn't yeah. work. Well, I think um, he still he, he doesn't really have a mean streak, but Capaldi still has that unique presence that he just naturally brings to it. Yeah. So I think you'll you'll still find some of that in series ten. But if you are going to watch series ten, uh. I would say just ignore the monk trilogy. I've heard which, that was the worst part. Yeah, it, and it's it wouldn't be so bad except it's three episodes in a twelve episode run. It is literally a quarter of the series, and it just doesn't land. Yeah, uh, I've um, like I, said, I watched I watched the first episode, and I thought fuck this because <laughs> I didn't like so that. I, I I actually I like the pilot. I thin ice and thin ice knock knock and oxygen is actually a good streak of three solid Doctor Who stories. Like, not great, but solid and enjoyable. And then you get to World Enough in Time and um, The Doctor Falls, and it's a good ending. Yeah. I think World Enough in Time is the best episode, but the best story goes to Thin Ice, in my opinion. Like how I think the best episode of Season 9 is Heaven Sent, but the best story is... Um, the Under the Lake two-parter. Yeah, in my opinion, that really holds up. I we watched it recently. I have. I've not watched gone back to series nine at all since it aired. I, I, remember, I remember liking the the first part of the Lake one, but members are thinking the second part was a bit. Yeah, I I agree. I, agree. I um, yeah. Uh, I've got what I was gonna say now. Fuck it, keep going. <laughs> Yeah, well, series eight isn't that good either. I, do, I I like I really like series eight. I like I quite like most. Of the, the only stories I really fucking hate is um, Kill the Moon and the Forest one. Um, yeah, in, well, just looking back, um, the best ones in that one, in my opinion, uh, are flat Flatline. Is Flatline's really genius. Eventually. Yeah, Flatline and Mummy on the Orient Express. The A rest, lot of people I really think. hate the um, Robin Hood story. I quite liked it. It's fine. I mean, the ending was a bit of a cop out. With they just had to shoot the goal out at the side of the ship, but that's really well, for, all. Yeah, for Robot of Sherwood. Yeah, that's it. I couldn't remember the name of it. Oh, yeah, and, and for that episode had to be like majorly re-edited because there was an ISIS beheading like a few days before. It. Yeah, I remember that now because originally wasn't because there was that line which um, the sheriff not him had, which like half man, half machine, and then he just sort of buggers off. Yeah, he off, yeah. I'd like to see if they've got that. Was it on the DVD, the deleted scene, or was that just completely sliced away? I have seen it's accessible somewhere. I can't remember if it is on the box set. I actually I own the box set. I should probably check that. But um, yeah, I've, I'm not sure exactly. Yeah. But, but a lot of series eight, I'm not a fan of Clara in it. I don't like the Danny Pink stuff. I did. Um, oh, Danny Pink could have been better, but I di- I didn't hate him as much as most people did. Yeah. I just I think his death was a bit shit though he just 
got hit by a car. Yeah. I got I got they I got they had to build up for him going to heaven or that, but they should have killed him off in the previous story, like maybe killed him off in the forest one. Yeah. Or something like that, I don't know. Like so there's, there's, but every like thirty seconds in the Capaldi era, there's just a reference to the Brigadier. Oh fuck's sake! I really want a button on my keyboard which does plays the Brigadier theme. I I did enjoy the memes like just whenever there's just a random character and they'd say what's your name and it's like John Lethbridge. <laughs> then it just it cuts to Capaldi. I love how things. I love how everyone called Gattis being something to do with the Brigadier, and as soon as it happened, everyone was like, oh for fuck's sake! Oh, in Twice Upon a Time. Yeah. Yeah, because it was it became so predictable. The bit that made me laugh the most was um, the fact, though, that in her first story, Kate was like, oh, I'm Kate Stewart, I don't use Lethbridge because I'm not... I don't want to live my father's shadow. And what did she spend the rest of her stories doing? Constantly reminding us that she's the Brigadier's daughter with a massive painting of him inside her fucking plane. Mm. Uh, to be fair, Kate's just boring, but I really can't... Is that Osgood? Oh, Osgood, yeah. Because I keep accidentally saying Ingrid, which is the actress's name. Who I have no mm. opinion on, but I just can't stand the character. Yeah, I liked I liked her at first, and just yeah. The thing I, I liked Osgood, I liked Osgood as like a weird audience surrogate in the three. I I think three. the the problem is though, you, you remember um, Great Show in the Galaxy? Uh, yeah. You remember Wiz Kid? Yeah. Osgood is is um Wiz Kid without a personality. <laughs> Yeah, that sounds about right. It's literally it's basically um it's Wizkid without the self awareness of taking the piss out of the fans. Yeah. Well I think I think it's self aware, but it's just still not doing anything with it. Yeah. I like I said, I just don't like the new unit team. The fact they're trying to make them more science y no unless they no, they 'cause they tried to make them more science division y in Power Three. And as soon as they come back in the Capaldi, it's just like, oh no, we're going back to shooting things. Yeah. They're not very consistent. I, I, that's actually one thing I kind of like about Resolution, how she tries to rip and they've just been dismantled. Yeah. Because of God, that pissed off a lot of people, didn't it? It did, but then again... I thought when, it was funny. Yeah, but, but then again, for those people who got pissed off at it, when you're a, a hammer, everything starts to look... <laughs> more or less. Oh... Uh... I need to rewatch Resolution. Why? Right, I... Harley Quinn says, "What's your name?" John Lethbridge hybrid. Student. Oh fuck! The hybrid memes at the time of were... like a hybrid what? What's the hybrid? Crap. Was the hybrid meant to be like the Doctor and Clara combined together? Being this, yeah, it was. <sighs> Even though Heaven Sent ends with the hybrid is me, and then me uh, turn. Oh uh, fuck! I forgot then... about fucking Maisie Williams in this. But then the Doctor goes to speak to me, and she's like, "I don't know what the hybrid." Is. He he just he doesn't know what the hybrid is, even though he's meant to be keeping the secret of it. Didn't 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 they also didn't they also tease like the Doctor potentially being half human? And every one of the fan base went up. No, no. Probably yeah. Oh, fuck says nine. Right, I think we should give that a. I think that's probably enough now. Is that that's the, is that the best place to end? Yeah, fuck series with nine. The, with the hybrid. Oh yeah, no that that Wi-Fi joke and resolution was trash though. I will I will oh, openly yeah, yeah. admit that that can fuck quite right off. I'll probably edit that out. It's like I've got I've got um these special editions of Star Wars on my computer, but I've specifically edited it so hand shot first because that's the only change that really pisses me off. Yeah. What about um, Darth Vader shouting no when he throws the Emperor? Oh, I can't be fucked with that. I'm not that big of a Star Wars fan. It's just the hand shot first thing is quite a big character moment, and it's kind of yeah stupid. Right. Well, thanks for suffering through this with me. No, this is this has been. You're the one who's been playing. I've completely zoned out for ninety percent of that game. Oh, I'm not so even good. lying. I, like I, I just spent half the time just looking at the chat. And, uh, so no, I yeah, it, it's been fun. I've appreciated yeah. being on. Quickly though, I'd have seen. I've not seen the despecialized editions, but I'm all, now that Disney owns Fox, I'm almost certain we're going to get non special editions. We're going to get the originals released. Yeah, I, I think it's going to happen after this new trilogy. I would be very surprised if they didn't do this because there are so yeah. many people want to see it. Even casual fans want to see it. Yeah, there's a, even if it is like exclusive to Disney Plus or something. Yeah, people will pay for there's it. There's got to be there, there's a market for it, and if there's a market for it, Disney wants it. Yeah, but yeah. Anyway, thanks for coming, and I do, I'm not going to make any promises about when the next stream is because I'm shit at organising. But it should be it should be. Um, episode three, Tardis with Billy Garrett John. Mm-hmm. So I'm gonna have to, I have to give him a message. See when he's free. I'll post it on Twitter. Cancel it four times. 
schedule it again, <laughs> get delayed now because there's been a football match on. Tale <laughs> as old as time, long as old as right. Right, well, thanks everyone for chilling that and giving us some questions and that. Oh yeah, yeah I I want to I want to do enough of Ipsen too at some point. It's just at the moment my mental health is fucked, and trying to do a whole scripted, edited thing is a ball ache. Which is why I'm happy I'm doing this because I can just sit down, stream it, record it, chuck it on YouTube, or forget to record it like I did last time, which I'm really pissed off about. <laughs> I, I had this huge like fucking great episode with like three fifths of the last remaining team of five Who fans, and I didn't record the cunt. Uh, that, that just makes it more special for yeah. those who were... Who Whoever, were whoever's there for that first one, you saw something special that day. Yeah. So I'm just going to upload this on YouTube with episode two and not even say where episode one is at all. <laughs> yeah. Right. Uh, Thanks, everyone. Just, we put episode one on Disney+. <laughs> <laughs> right. Catch you later, everyone. Bye! Thank you. Everyone. Thank you.